Okay, so I, I am sure you've heard the the joke of like, how do you eat an elephant uh, one bite at a time, right? And, and maybe you yep. and I have talked about this, but what it, it yeah. occurred to me while I was mowing was mm. how many thing, how many other things that actually play into this metaphor quite well overall that should also be taken into account, right? So, mm-hmm. so I outlined these and then I organized them a little, uh, but while I was, so um, first is to understand your real goal of eating the elephant, right? Is it, is it to get the nutrition? Because it, depending on actually understanding your goals, how you approach it might change. Right. Like, so is it it trying to get rid of the body? Is it trying to get nutrition? Is it, you know, what, why are you doing this? Right. Well, also if you have a very big elephant, you might start in a different place. Well, that, that, that comes up. Yeah, that's absolutely. Um, And, and before we even jump into it is, are there other ways, once you've identified your goals, like, is this really eating the elephant, the right thing to do? Like maybe there's a different way Mm -hmm. to get your goal. Right. That's why identifying Mm -hmm. your actual goal is, is more important. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. Should you eat the whole thing? And that's kind of part of, but I touch on it later too. Maybe if your goal is nutrition, maybe the whole elephant's not, maybe there are certain parts of the elephant that are, you know, more productive, more, or if it's a profit thing or more profitable, like, why don't you start, you know, like that, think about this, right? Like, um, well, yeah. I mean, like, are you, it's like, are you solving the right problem? Yeah. Is eating Which, the elephant the right idea? Yeah. Well, oh, sorry. Actually, the one up above, sorry. The, the, should you eat the whole thing? I need to reword that slightly. It's sometimes you, you don't need to do the entire job. Like everyone thinks this is what I need to do. But if you can cut out 20% of what you're doing because it just isn't worth it, just cut yeah. out the 20% and like, holy hell, like you have very fast mm-hmm. learning. Like I'm being more productive just because mm-hmm. I have to do, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. The next one is mm-hmm. should you prioritize parts, right? Should you, should you, should mm-hmm. you look at certain ones more important than others? Mm-hmm. Uh, this is where I know you're going to get in like the, the whole now, how, when I'm tackling how to actually go about eating it or doing whatever I want, is there a way I can batch it together where, Hey, taking the feet all at the same time, because as humans, right, we get much more efficient when we do the same tasks over and over. The other great thing about that is when you're batch processing, that's where we really start understanding things that we can automate, things that we can really streamline, right? You gain efficiencies just because you humans we do them in a row and we become more efficient but you and i both know when we're talking about stuff with work like oh i realize now i could write a script to do part of this right like yeah you bet. Um, and it really helps pop in the mind um mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so the other one was hey for the most part nobody actually eats a freaking elephant at one seating right like can you break it into digestible sections of smaller things. Now, this is the one actually for mowing the lawn that I realized I have, you know, five acres and the front end is, let's say it's four acres. It's a big, it's not a square, but it's just a big area. And normally I start on the outside and go around and around. And honestly, I feel like it takes forever because I don't have a quick win. You know what I mean? Today, instead of going around and not seeing any progress, I divided it up into little grids. And I really, normally... Normally, because yeah. it takes me three hours, normally yeah. I take a break in the middle, I stop and do stuff because I'm like, it's just a beat down. I did the whole thing today without stopping. And I'm pretty sure it was because I compartmentalized it and said, oh, look, I did this. Look, I did this. Yeah, look, yeah, I- yeah, yeah, yeah. The psychology. I'm, so glad, you, I'm yeah. so glad you brought that up because I think the psychology is a really big one because even the psychology of, oh, my God, my task is so large. That right. Awesome. Right. You may not even begin, but that might ultimately, right. as you were saying, unpack it. it may not be the ultimate goal, but the psychology of quick wins and yeah. also of right. being able to do it incrementally. So your psychology on how you approach it is uh, yeah, yeah, it, I was thinking, it's brilliant. Uh, I was thinking of actually doing a video with the picture of an elephant in a fork and I, and right. being like, you took a bite mm. and now you're still seeing this mm. entire elephant, right? You're like, I have so much more mm. to do. Jesus, you know, and, and that's other, why I'm like, yeah, go ahead. The, the other thing is that when you make it smaller chunks, you could improve how you deal with eating, cooking, whatever, one part. But right. You, it's very hard to improve. If, there, if you're going to take 100 bites or there's 100 pieces to eat and you're doing it all at once, it's very hard to work out how to optimize that. Right, right. Because you, you might be able to do certain parts more efficiently than others. Right? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, so doing right. it incrementally, you can learn as you go, and and not every 
step in the process, you might be able to optimize as best as every other process. So right. if it's one big thing, it's much harder to optimize for yep. than if it's a hundred little things that you can look to wear, not just because it's a smaller thing, as you say, like a quick win, but right. also yep. um, yeah. you're, you're learning incrementally. Like yeah. you haven't spent 100 hours eating the elephant. Then you go, hmm, how could I make it better? You might have spent, you know, 100 one hour segments. Yeah. You know, I'm going to have to add a step because just from what you said there, I think a lot of that I, I had already thought, but that last little bit too of you should do some and then take a look at what you did and think about it to how can I work smarter, right? Like how can I take a better approach? What have I learned? And start applying that right. um, mm -hmm. intermittently instead of doing it all one way. Now, of course, if right. you have a this repetitive, like every week you have to eat an elephant, you know, maybe you do it all the one way, but you still need to, after the fact, Take notes, write down of ideas on a way to improve it for next time, right? I, that, that's a great one. Um, yeah. So, uh, another so one, just to relate, a, 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 a yeah. Para yeah. And just one the quick parallel metaphor is, is running a marathon. You wouldn't wake up in the morning and go, I'm going to run 42 miles. You right. have to do it bit right. by bit, piece by piece. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Now, actually, so this next one I love, it's it's not what you just said, but it's similar too. of like, for the love of God, who wants to eat that much elephant straight, right? So breaking up what you're doing and having something else to, to put into it. So it's not monotony, right? Like you're not just beat down with it. Um, was another one. I'm like, you know, because that's where yeah. I think quite well yeah. with your last point yeah. about the, the small that's learnings. Right. And then, you know, you, you, you get to use them instead of doing it all right at once. It's hard to think outside the box but if you plan to break it up then you can apply those things let's see what else we got. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the other one was like you know a lot of people even when they break it up they don't actually schedule time on their calendar at regular intervals right to actually do it they'll say oh well i'm going to break it up but you you know if you put those things on your count or make sure you do them because the, otherwise it's you know it just who knows when it'll get done right but actually having a set plan for when you're going to do it is also really, right really and I think there's a couple of things on this. So the first one is that you know you do certain do certain things at optimal times. There are times when you'll be more. Well, that's a good one too, um, right? Right. So there'll be times when you can, because it's quieter, or we've got peace and quiet, or you feel physically better, or or whatever. Um, and then the other thing is this then becomes habitual as well. So some of the things that you do become so second nature, whether they are things you automate or just behaviors you have. That you don't uh, automatically think about it. The the, the um, an example of that. It's another analogy. The uh, Olympic swimmer Michael Phelps, who's the most I think the most medalled swimmer in the world. Yep. He has a routine that he follows when he's going in the pool. He used to swim, go in the pool that he does every single time exactly the same way always, and it's a routine he has, and it's so ingrained in his psyche, he doesn't need to think about it. It's almost robotic or almost programmatic. So that frees his mind to think about right. the things that are new or particular about that race or that competition. So <clears throat> you can think about that, whether it be technology yeah. or something um, uh, like that, You that you make certain behaviors such a, a learned process that it's second nature that you don't need to think about them, whether it be right. that you programmed a script or whether it's just a, right. a process that you have. So that way you can optimize to, 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 to address the things you need to address, not the things that are done you know, habitually and programmatically. Right. Well, I, I think, yeah, you're leaning on towards the, the, it's subconscious, right? Like I don't even have to think about yes, it. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And that's, yeah. But and yeah. methodical too, Precise. right? Is that you should have a strategy and a plan. So strategizing and having a methodical right. thing, which also it's right. rather realized uh, <laughs> I, I need to mow the lawn more often because this is when I actually, my mind is free. I'm not I, I rarely, mm. like you, have downtime where I'm sitting here not strategizing, <laughs> not thinking of other stuff because I'm working, right? But I'm like, yeah, I, I get your point of, I, I realized I need to have more time that I put aside to free think of different approaches on things and what I'm doing, right? Because I don't normally do that. Were you going to say something a minute ago? And there are also things that, yeah, the, yeah, the other thing is that there are also things that, oh, whether you're mowing your lawn or your neighbor's lawn or any other lawn, there are also things there that are always going to be the same. And, right. you know, those things, again, are an opportunity to optimize as well. That right. for every piece of the elephant that you eat, there are going to be some processes that are the same. Uh, so you can prepare and anticipate those. 
Yeah, absolutely. Let's see. I think I'm almost done here. Are you, are, and here was the, like, are you using the right tool? Are you using a fork and a knife to eat elephant? Like maybe a chainsaw might be something you might want to get. Right. I'm like, good Lord. Like, this is why I was like, it's kind of funny because the whole eating an elephant is just an analogy, but it really does. It's easy to extrapolate and think of other things. Um, but still use the elephant analogy because mm. it's so easy to picture mm. that like, um, you know, maybe mm. I should, you know, and, and which I think the next one is the, um, can you improve the tools that you have? Like, so not only do I have the right tools, but what mm. tweaks can I make mm. to my existing tools, right? Or, or customize something else to, to you know what? Yeah. Each of, each of these things that you've written here are all interconnected. Yeah, because right. it might be it right. might be that if you're eating the whole elephant, that a chainsaw is required. But if you're anticipating other of right. the points you made, maybe it's right. not the best tool. Right, it's dynamic. You absolutely, the one inter there's interaction between them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, um, should should you get help? Right? Should you have some someone else? It's like for the automation stuff. Maybe people think about this, but they have people like I do. I hire people to implement, you know, my my thoughts. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, that's you know, it's it's. Like, what are you? What are you best at? What's the overall goal? Right. What are you best at. Where's the right. best use of your time? Yeah. Um, it's the whole to, to to bring it back to a business analogy. You know, are you better working in the business or on the business? Right. Right. Is your are your? I mean, you. One of the challenges I think is that. You know, everyone can eat and needs to eat, right? To use this elephant analogy, but not everyone is going to be an accomplished butcher or yeah. accomplished cook or whatever. So, where yeah. are your skills best used? Yeah, you know, have, have you, by the way, and maybe you're probably familiar with this guy because he's somewhat of a local for you, at least at times. Um, Beard meets food. It's a YouTube channel. He 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 eats a crazy amount of food, right? Like, and he does his videos. No. And I was realizing in his videos, he and I don't think he strategizes this way, but he will eat all of one thing. He'll eat all of the French fries and he'll eat all of this. But I'm like, he's having those short wins, those small wins, right? But also back into this point of like, he he is a he is a professional eater, right? Like maybe I should you would hire this guy to like I just need the food. I need my my goal is to have the elephant disappear, you know, then. I just need to eat them. I don't have to necessarily eat it. Maybe someone else is better. Um, than that. Um, so nope, and that, that was it. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I was like, wow. And I'm sure we can think of more, but I, I was just like, you know, there's a lot of lessons to be learned and just this little analogy of, you know, and, and, and how you go about things. Oh, I think it's great. I mean, it's very relatable and it, it, you don't need to think about this in the context of technology. It's applicable in every part of your life, whether you're eating an elephant right. or you're running a marathon or you're right. trying to solve a, a business goal. Um, and I, I think that um, you, sometimes you're so in the weeds, you lose sight of the bigger picture and the bigger picture might be the elephant. But actually, is that really, as you were saying here earlier, you know, in the early part of this, what the goal is right yeah no um but i i thought it was a um just a fun thing that like a little a little jokey but a, not really right like a lot of a lot of real practical ways to get people to oh, absolutely. achieving their I think goal the, i think the one that is the one of the most easy ones to or the most the least obvious ones and the ones easy to overlook which i'm so glad you put in is the psychological element yeah right of, right. of achieving small wins. And, and that as a concept also sits really well with the idea of, you know, the agile approach of iterating over time as well. They sit really well. So I think if people can embrace the idea of small wins, accomplishments, building momentum, and they do things, if they're looking at implementing technology in the same way, then, um, you know, whether it confirms a business case or you, to, you know, when people are doing things in an agile way, they're letting, making data-driven decisions. So, for example, in the analogy here, you might find out that it takes you three hours to cook a particular, like a limb of the elephant. So, therefore, if you've got a certain amount of time before the gas runs out or the light runs out or whatever, you should do things in a certain way. Then, you know, you can learn as you go and, and evolve your system. Well, I, I think that's a great point. I wrote, I just wrote that one down too because it's, it's like tracking 
you're six, tracking what you do and really understanding getting metrics right on each of the different wow. things because wow. until you understand that often it's hard to understand where you can actually have improvements right like oh wow i didn't realize doing this part of it was you know a big part um, the other one i wrote down from from what you were talking about the, there is a, definitely a, a big plus to the psychological small wins of doing it. But what I should have added on to that was to to somehow reward yourself, whether it's just to look at pat on the back, and get a good job, or you get to to get an ice cream, whatever. Like having something to reward yourself in some way, it, it also helps encourage you to do more, you know, to to want to do more. I think I think the other thing that's kind of implicit, but it's worth mentioning, is you know if this was the context of a race and you had two identical identical elephants and two teams. Uh, I think you should pause and consider these 11 questions before you begin. Absolutely. So you should have a strategy at the beginning. Yeah, right. Right, right. 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 And the strategy, yeah. I think one of the big takeaways from this is the strategy, it's completely okay for the strategy to evolve, for the hypothesis to fail, but you have to begin with an approach and then yeah. prove it or just. I'll prove it or disprove it, measure it and measure it, and then you yeah. can adapt it. Well, but actually, you I, was, can't, mm, I was going to say with that point, which is where you were going with that, was to test. Mm. Hey, you right. know what? Is is Let's mm. try this and then have metrics to confirm or deny right. like what right. worked or didn't work. Right? Because That's, if you if you consider the eating of the elephant a process, you can't, by implication, you should be able to write down the steps in the process. Right. But it's right. very hard to take any actions on the process if you don't codify it, write it down and say, this is, these are the steps. Regardless so, of what it is, you should be able to have some high level, these are the steps I'm going to follow. Because then you yeah. can start to measure them rather than being some abstract consideration in your head that isn't structural, structured. Right. Right. I, I wrote down, but it's tied to what you just said, is having a checklist. Like, so you might yeah, want to have yeah, a yeah, yeah. list of the things that you have to have ahead of time, this and that, but it has to do also with the checklist. Of course, you have them tied into steps, right? Of here's the process I'm going to work through. Um, and then again, having metrics to look back on that and say, did this work better than that? Right. But of course, the other exactly. one, is, it changes, it, you know what, it gets back to that goal and something about the goal. I'm not sure how we'd phrase it. Is it going to be a recurring goal? Is this something that's going to be recurring right. and at what scale? Like, right. is it something that's going right. to, you know, how important is it to, to so mm -hmm. the, more, mm -hmm. the more times you're going to do it, the more mm -hmm. it allows you to actually test mm -hmm. and experiment and find better and mm -hmm. then the better, the more gain you get when you do optimize, right? Because otherwise, mm -hmm. if it's a one-time thing, maybe it's just strategy, you know, and having a little bit of a plan, but it's not the testing, right? Like, I just need to get it done. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll um, give another analogy here. This is a sporting one because I, I love sport. Um, when you see um, football coaches, baseball coaches, whatever, often they'll talk about people, journalists in particular, will go, you know, do you think you're going to win the, the the league, the championship, this World Series or whatever? And they'll often say, you know, my focus is on the next game. You know, I just need to win the next game. And they, they want to almost program their team and their way that they set up to know yeah. if they're going to be the champs, all they need to do is win the next game right. and then win the next game and win That's the right. next game. Yeah. And, and that, that sort of narrow focus actually allows them to achieve their bigger goal because they know if they can be absolutely brilliant, world-class and unbeatable in the next game, and then they have that mentality carried forward into the next game, the next game, the next game. If they win every single game, chances right. are they will be the champ. So you will achieve your goal, your bigger goal, if you can achieve each of these little goals. No, absolutely. The, the, and yeah, you're absolutely right that uh, athletics, but the, the book I mentioned to you, I think a couple of years ago now, um, Cyber cybernetics, a new cyber cybernetics, where they, this is one that, that a lot of the people adopted from that guy, the initial guy, but that the power, and it's not just positive thinking, because that gets over, it's not, I'm going to win and just saying that, but not actually doing stuff, but envisioning yourself as actually, you know, solving it is a good thing. But I, I totally get your point too, of the focus as well, right? Focus on what you're doing right then and there and and have a, a state it, envision it in your mind, you're going to succeed, right? And then you fulfill it. Well, also in the context of the elephant, just become the very best at optimizing to eat that piece. 
and then the next piece and then right. the next piece. And if you are, if you've got that really dialed in and it's amazing how you do that piece and then the next piece, you know, you'll be the fastest, the best, the quickest, the whatever. Because you are learning and you're optimizing for those small wins, that, that incremental success. And if you can improve, there's the other thing I love to say all the time. You know, if you if you improve, is it one percent a day or something? You'll be thirty seven yeah. times in a year. Like such powerful concepts. And then if you carry that forward into things like this elephant, the elephant will become much much less daunting, as you say. You just do it one piece at a time. Right. Yeah. I um, the one I, I I was thinking about Brian Tracy's book Eat That Frog, and he argues. Find whatever's the hardest thing there is to do, do that first in the day. If the worst thing you have to do mm. in a day is a frog, do that first thing because then everything else is easy. And I, I overall, I do agree that it is very helpful. At the same time, like it's, uh, unless you mentioned earlier, sometimes there's a certain time of day or something where we are optimized, right? And that would, that's where, like, maybe that you have to take that into account as well. Yeah, that's a very interesting discussion because I've also read that and I personally don't subscribe to that. I understand the psychology. I have a slightly different take that for me, I get a, a buzz and dolphins or whatever when when I feel I have momentum. So yeah. I when I feel like I'm achieving and that comes from those small wins, yeah. that I feel in a more of a, I mean, I think Cal Newport calls it a flow state. It's better for me. And then also just on a very practical level, particularly when you work in a business environment, there's push and pull factors, right? So there are things that people pull pull on you, like they make you do things. And then they're like people demand of you and then you demand of other people, yep. right? So what I try to do often is do those small things first that are easy for me to do that builds momentum that pushes to others like so i'm delivering for others that gives me the space to do those big things those hard things that i need to do gotcha. because right. what i what i don't want to be in a situation of is where i'm doing the, that hard single thing that may yeah. be important to me, may not be important to me or may be important to others and that i i'm getting demands upon me from others whilst i've got this big roadblock now i so i don't i have a slightly i, I love his idea but i personally don't find it translates into you know real life I, I think it just boils down to if if you have control of the events around you and the timing of stuff it makes sense if you don't have control right. of that then then you're i think you're right, right. you need to work around right. the way the, right. the it's going to be in yeah. order to make sure you achieve it uh, and i think know. the big takeaway there is people should do i think what is best for them so their optimum Great time and all of those things people everyone will be different my me personally i'm very good at very first thing in the morning so i'm much yeah. more productive at four o'clock four o'clock in the morning than i am at 10 o'clock in the evening so i rebalance my day to make sure that by the time my colleagues are awake i've already done four or five hours work and they're not waiting on me for anything but i, I you know yeah. i'm waiting on them i'm in a position of, it's like um tug of war or um, so yeah. i'm in control yeah, and that actually, before I jump into that, I want to real quickly go back to because just because you brought it up, the whole momentum thing and being so important, and that again with sports, I think that's easy to look at sports and see teams mm -hmm. that go on a winning streak or even batters, you know, when you're on a hitting streak, whatever it is. Like, there's a lot to that, right? That's a very clear thing, and that that proves that momentum really does have having the gains, having it in a row, really does help you psychologically succeed even more. Um, but you know, the other one was the the. Um, getting the work done at different times. Um, oh, you almost need to look at yourself and, and match. Cause it's important. You don't just say, Oh, I'm gonna do the hardest thing first. Well, if, if you're, if you're best at the, at the morning, then the hardest thing first makes sense. But what you don't want to do is do something that you need 10% of your brain to do when you're the most optimal. And then at the end of the day where you are, are struggling to tackle your hardest thing, right? Like, so right. Right. You match the best you can, right? right? Yeah. Also, just getting back to the, sort of the, the applicability to let's call it business, I think personally, um, I like to think sort of outside of the nine to five mindset. So a practical example would be, if my optimum time is 4 a.m. in the morning and I have no distractions, I'm at my peak powers and I'm, I can have more focus, I would prefer to batch and write 
20 emails at that time yeah, and right. schedule oh, gotcha. right. rather than do it in a nine to five window right. and uh, take three times longer or two times longer to free up my time and give me more margin during the day to go for a walk or to read a document or something. So I think um, good to break out of that nine to five mentality. You can time shift certain things. I love doing things asynchronously. So I'll often yeah. record a video. Joe, you're obviously a massive fan of videos. And they're great because you can do things asynchronously. I think one of the biggest wastes of time often is having meetings um, because people just meet to the first five minutes is spent about the weather. The last five minutes is talking about, you know, the next day. It's just such an unproductive. You know, uh, that's really interesting is you're right. If I record a video for someone, I'm not going to be like chit chatty. Hey, this is what I did this weekend. Blah, blah, blah. I'm going to mm. get to the, the matter and then give them that. Mm. And now mm. you've got rid of the other, not that I think both of us mm. know, Social interaction is an important thing to some degree, mm. but mm -hmm. it definitely eats into your time of, yeah. And do you really need to do that all the time? Not necessarily. Yeah, You're just it. delivering. There's a wonderful um, thing called um, lean manufacturing, which I'm a huge sure. fan of. Yeah. And yeah. they talk about value, right? And the idea is that the value is only added when you are touching the product. Like it's, you're working on the tools that's changing the product. Um, so, so if you were doing, so there's the idea of value and non-value added activities, right? So in the context of meetings, all of that nonsense at the beginning about the weather, yes, it's building social cohesion and, and team spirit. Long term. But it's non-value yeah. add. There are other ways that maybe you could do that in a more productive way. So you could actually meet and go and have lunch or something, or you could go and have a beer or you could have a, a social chit chat hour. But the fact that that um, discussion about the weather, particularly if you're English, is had every single time, all the time, every day, you, it's the niceties that you could take five yeah. minutes off the call. And just when you do these videos, you're only giving value. It's only right. what people need. Right. They can watch them back at their own pace, in their own environment, at the time that suits them. So there's a lot of value. It's a huge fan of asynchronous communication like that. And you're not you're not interrupting your flow because you're doing it when you're at best right. best optimized, right. and they yeah. are similarly consuming it at the same time. You know what, Ryan? It, it makes me think about it. Maybe you'll laugh at this analogy. It's the comparison between email and instant messaging. Instant messaging, I expect someone to be here. I'm going to interrupt them. Like that's kind right, of important. Right, Email, right, you can almost send right. them out whenever. And you, you're like, someone hopefully that day will get back to me. Mm. But I'm not expecting someone to stop what they're doing and respond to me right mm. then, which is why I love email overall. It's just like mm. when, when I ask his to do something and there's no time pressure, I will actually send him an email instead, especially if it's like on the weekend or something. Because I, I, like you, I, I'm always working, well, right? It's, I'm, it's funny because I'm a bit sneaky like that. I kind of, I agree with you completely because it's very instant messaging is very intrusive, but an email an email has its place. And I don't, I quite like email, but one of the things I do with email is I often schedule emails. Yeah. Right. To arrive at the time when the people are but starting to work. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. So, so that I know that they're one of their first actions is likely to be to check their emails. And I want to communicate with them when they are most ready to embrace what I what I need. Because I it's all about having influence, right? So I want to provide them what I want them to work on in a way I want them to work on it when I need it. Yeah. And so I actually, I agree with you about email being like that, but I also use it as a, use it the other way around by sending those messages when I want them to know right. that I, you know, so I might write an email on Saturday morning, but schedule it so they'll get it at 8.30 sure. in the morning on Monday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the other one, just to circle back to it, because I think it's also a critical one, and not everyone can do it, uh, depending on your job and also your attitude, is uh, you know Dan Kennedy talks about time vampires. And he actually, he when he was a CEO of a company, he had an open-door policy, and he's like, I never got anything done, because people always came in and interrupted me. So he finally just started to go. He had another office somewhere else entirely he would just go to, so people couldn't talk to him and interrupt him when he was being productive. But it's like, you know... Have have a way to find your private space and your private time, whether it's, I know you and I, it's often early, early in the morning, even with our, our families, not even, you know, no, no one's around and we get a lot done. Uh, but that, yes. it's, a, it's a critical thing that a lot of people I don't think take advantage of at all. Mm, yeah. And I think that people should, I'd encourage 
people to experiment with that because you can, it's not even about 2xing your productivity. It's just, as you just think about it in practical terms, if you're interrupted, it takes a long time to get back into that flow. And could you have, you know, 45 minutes of quality time at five o'clock in the morning is probably going to be one and a half hours in that sort of peak time, the maximum dis disruption time. Because the, one of the challenges now with this instant communication, as you say, is you can't anticipate interruptions. And, and even email is an interruption, but hopefully your email traffic and your Instagram and your, your instant messenger traffic will be quieter, quote, out of hours. And then you can take back control and swing the pendulum back into your control. Awesome, man. Thanks. I, I knew you'd uh, enjoy the, the yeah, thoughts. Yeah, great, Joe. To contribute. Yeah, it's fun Pleasure. stuff.